I have a confession to make. I did not negotiate my salary when I accepted my first full-time offer. I know that might sound crazy to some and if it doesn't sound crazy to you then it should sound crazy to you because I don't think that was the right move. I mean I was coming from a place where I was working at Five Guys and when I saw that number of how much they wanted to pay me, oh there's a dog, of how much they wanted to pay me, I was just kind of like, ugh, like they want to pay me that much? I had so much imposter syndrome and I kind of just took it and I don't think I should have. However, I still don't know what is the best way to even negotiate. How do you bring this up? Should all people even negotiate? Like I still have so many questions. I want to get this answered for me and for y'all so that when you do negotiate your pay, you can be in the best situation possible and get as much money as you can. So to answer these questions, I called on a technical recruiter, Gabrielle Woody, so that she can break down all of our questions and kind of put us in a better space. So yeah, let's dive into our conversation. The first question I want to ask you is what can I even negotiate? Everything. No. So <laughs> um, <laughs> I would say the most common areas is your base salary, your stock in the company, your sign-on bonus, and sometimes even your annual bonus. Other things that sometimes are negotiable are your vacation time, your relocation plan, or how much money you're getting for relocation. But I would say the main areas would be like your salary stock and sign-on bonus. And those are what you really want to aim for as well. How would I even start that process? of even wanting to negotiate. So let's say I'm in the process, I'm interviewing, I'm in the interview stage. Like when is a good time to actually start like talking about numbers and negotiating? When you get your offer, your recruiter usually calls you just to get like a sense of what your expectations are. But I would actually recommend waiting till you get the offer letter in hand because you could lowball yourself. You could say, I want this 55,000 and they were expecting to give you 65,000. So mm -hmm. I would wait to see what they come back with and then negotiate and give them proposal some like inside maybe you know the inside scoop what does doing research mean so like am i looking stuff up on google are there any good websites to you yeah um i mean google obviously is your best friend but there are websites out there that can calculate what your like your worth should be there's a glass door they have a calculator called know your worth and you just input what your role is, how much experience you have, the location, the industry, and it just compares millions of people's salaries um, against what you put in the calculator and it'll tell you what you should be paid and it also give you a range of that specific job profile at that location. And there's also um, LinkedIn salaries. So people are inputting their salary data into LinkedIn and so LinkedIn can do a comparison for you. And there's also payscale.com. So those are all pay calculators that I think they're pretty accurate data. And if you don't wanna use a calculator, Glassdoor, you can just type in a job in Glassdoor and location and it will tell you what the different roles are being paid and for different companies. How would I start that conversation with a recruiter? So let's say I did my research, I know kind of like what the average is, how do I even like bring that up? I would email your recruiter to ask to schedule some time to talk about the offer they gave you and just some areas that were a concern to you. And then before actually having the call, like really practice because you want to make sure you yeah. sound you want to make sure you sound confident and really humble. It's mm -hmm. such a turnoff if a candidate is really but before we do that, if you're liking this video so far, make sure to give it a like and also smash <laughs> I'm annoying that subscribe button. That lets the algorithm know that you like this video so hopefully they can show it to more people. So thank you so much for watching 
watching so far and let's dive into this conversation. Arrogant and is saying like, I am like, I know I'm worth X, Y, and Z. Like I won't settle for anything less. There's a fine line between being confident and being humble. Reassuring them why you feel like you're such a fit for the role, what value you'll bring to the company and why the company aligns with your values. Just making sure you're showing the enthusiasm and then just having a clear proposal. So once you're on the call with the recruiter, go over the relevant experience you have, what your expectations are. If you have competing offers, show the research you did. So if you do do those Glassdoor or Payscale calculators, bringing that data, I, I think as long as you have a strong proposal and you're realistic on your expectations for the salary, the conversation should go pretty smoothly. Recruiters are very used to negotiation yeah and then you talked a lot about this proposal and kind of like highlighting yourself and your abilities mm -hmm. so for example if it's like a full stack software engineering position do I say like oh I have skills in front end like doing this and back end like can it just be based off your past experiences yeah it could be based off your past experiences so if you have previous work experience your school projects anything that you think is unique um, or anything that you showcase in the interview because whatever you said during the interview is why they gave you the offer so just reiterating that if you take a look at the job description and highlighting those skills and maybe something unique you could bring to the table that other candidates don't have that would be a way to highlight your experience as well and then you personally do you prefer proposals that are sent through emails or do you prefer to like set up a time emails can be misinterpreted. I don't know someone's tone of voice through an email. Something I may read something wrong and think they're being arrogant or rude and they're not. It also allows the candidate to show their enthusiasm and that they are confident. And then I know you have like a whole you know like friend group of recruiters and so from your experience or any of their experiences has an offer been revoked because someone was trying to negotiate pay or maybe they did it in an arrogant way the offers i've never seen an offer rescinded from the companies i've worked for or my peers because of someone asking to negotiate or the way someone negotiated i I think the way someone negotiates could be a turnoff and they might say, no, this is our best offer, but I don't think they will take it away. I haven't seen that happen before. And then when it comes to having competing offers from different companies, what's the best way? Maybe it's it's a person, they have three different offers, one is the highest, how do they go about telling that to the other companies? Yeah, you would just simply say, I have competing offers and this is the compensation package they offered me and if there's any way you could match that, like you are my dream company, I would prefer to be with you guys and list out like all your financial restraints at the moment. Um, I know students have a lot of student loans or it's like their first time living on their own. Rent may be super high, like cost of living you have to take into consideration. Um, you may be in a lot of debt, even not from school. So just listing out what the concerns are. Is there any cons to kind of like expanding? I don't know if that's the right word, but kind of like this process going on for a while, because like, let's say I negotiate with you, you offer me a higher one, but then another company offers something even higher, you know, like, is that too much if the period goes on for a longer time? So companies will usually say, this is our final offer. Like you okay. will know if that company literally cannot go go any higher on your compensation package. Dragging it out could seem a little wishy-washy, but it's also the nature of recruiting. You are you if you're upfront that you were actively interviewing and that you are expecting final decisions within a certain period of time. I think your recruiter should understand that. And then also, is it okay for also interns to negotiate whatever their salary is? 
Yeah, I, f I feel like at all levels, it doesn't hurt to ask, especially if you have another competing offer and you want to be paid at that minimum. Um, the worst that can happen is someone says no, but I you should always ask. And then do you also have any special advice for people who are like self-taught engineers that are trying to, like let's say they got the job offer and they're trying to negotiate that? Yeah, I mean, honestly, I always say it's the worst thing an employer can say is no, but you're gonna be kicking yourself down if you get to your job and you hear or you see that people are making a certain amount more than you and they're like, well, I negotiated and you're like, oh, okay, why didn't I do that? that? that so <laughs> it's like, you're gonna be hurting in the end if, in, if you didn't ask in the beginning. So it doesn't hurt to ask. The worst that yeah. can happen is someone says no, but um, it's not gonna jeopardize anything. And if you know your worth, like be confident in that and ask for it. What is your opinion on them giving you an offer and then you like going back and asking for more? Once they give you your new offer, I would ask the recruiter, is this the best offer you guys can give me? That will avoid all the back and forth. So why do you think some people do not negotiate their pay? Well, some people I've talked to just didn't know that you could negotiate. Others think they're being greedy and it'll look down upon by their employer or they might jeopardize the relationship with their manager um some people just don't know what to say now they know. <laughs> they know <laughs> yeah and others like um we were talking about before may think your offer will get rescinded if you ask so i think um there's just like a lot of misconceptions out there but it doesn't hurt to negotiate and i feel like you should always ask and then do you have any last tips when it comes yeah. to- Yeah. You know, every company is different. I don't, I personally don't know every single company that does it does or doesn't negotiate. So just keep that in mind during the negotiation process. Also keep in mind like what industry you're in, what location, your role, how much experience you've had in. There's a lot of different variables that go into an offer. So that's why those um, websites I mentioned earlier will be really helpful for you to get your market data. Um, and just don't be afraid. You're gonna really kick yourself yeah. in the end because what you start with, your annual raises are a certain percentage of your starting salary. So you wanna start as high as you possibly can. Nice. And then you drop so much knowledge. Where can people find you? Oh, uh, well, I have a website, GabrielleWitty.com. It has some interview guides and people can book one-on-ones with me or you can find me on LinkedIn. I'm happy to network with everyone and help in any way possible. So should all people negotiate their pay? If you ask me, the answer is yes. Don't let imposter syndrome, don't let you coming out of college or boot camp or self-taught, don't let any of that stop you. They gave you this offer because they believe in you, you pass the technical interviews, and you are qualified. So make sure you bring all of that to the table. And at the end of the day, the worst thing they can say is no, but at least you tried. So thank you so much. Have a great day.